A tailstock tap die holder should be among the first accessories a machinist gets for his lathe. This video will show an easy way to accomplish that. Here's a photo of the seven pieces that comprising my tailstock tap die holder, which I'll be demonstrating in this video. Here's the seven pieces that comprise the tool. That's the knurled sleeve in my left hand. That's a number two Morse taper arbor with a has a five eight shank on it to, with the knurled sleeve slips over. That's the one inch die holder, and I just inserted a one inch diameter split die. There's a flat on the shank of the die holder that is the set screw on the knurled sleeve goes against that flat to prevent it from turning. Uh, there's a 13 16 die holder. Again, two set screws on there to hold the die and the flat to hold the shank of the die holder in the knurled sleeve. This is the uh, half inch tap chuck, meaning that uh, it will accept from a quarter inch to a half inch taps. Again, it goes in the knurled sleeve also with a set screw. Here's the what I call the quarter inch tap holder, which will accept taps from an aught up to a quarter inch. And again, here's the knurled sleeve sliding on the shank of the number two Morse taper arbor. On the larger taps and the larger dies, they too big to be hand held. So a stop handle is provided, which threads in one of the holes on the knurled sleeve. I use a 1 8 punch just to tighten it up a little bit. You want to make sure it's tight up against the shoulder. And uh, here is a inch and a half die holder. We're really getting up to the capacity of the tool now. And it, I call it an extended die holder because it sticks out enough where I've got it will accept a th three quarter tap up to and a thread length up to about one inch in length a little over one inch there's a number three Morse taper arbor there's a number one Morse taper arbor which are also available the tool can be purchased either way that's the items and then along with it is the inch and a half die holder that's all that i have to offer the tool usually uh, is sold or the most popular is the morse the number two morse taper arbor shown there in this shot but the uh, number three and the number one are available. Hello, I'm Neil Butterfield, along with my trusty South Bend lathe. Just thought you should see that I'm for real. Here's a view of a piece of 730 seconds hex brass in my 3C collet. It's been turned to uh, about a 135 diameter. Here's the uh, 13 16 die holder that we're going to use to, it, of course, it slips into the uh, knurled sleeve uh, with it flat underneath the set screw. In the knurled sleeve, set screw is tightened down. Uh, I have a 13 16 diameter split die, which we insert into the 13 16 die holder. 
Snug up the two opposed set screws, 180 degrees opposed. They just have to be snug, not overly tightened. The knurled uh, sleeve, knurled sleeve slips over the uh, arbor. The, the number two Morse taper arbor is inserted into the tailstock. The knurled sleeve slips over the 5 8 shank, slides back and forth. We'll get ready to thread this. All right. I reoriented the camera here so you can get a little better shot of the, the threading. Uh, I'm going to slop this up with some oil. I'm just using regular old mobile cutting oil. Uh, I don't always use an oil with brass, but in, for threading, I like to use uh, oil. There's a chamfer on that 135 diameter, and uh, the machine's running. We're in back gear. Uh, it's about 95 RPM. Turn the thing on, and uh, I'm going to with the, the sliding or the knurled uh, the knurled sleeve I can move it back and forth I'm going to push that on to the threaded or the turned part of the brass you'll see the, th the die start cutting the thread there it is it's cutting you'll see the chips in a few minutes there they come this hand holding on smaller Taps and dies, the sixes, the eights, the nines. So nice, so much fun. See how you release that, and it'll just turn with the work. Release it, and it turns. As soon as you grip it, it starts to cut the thread again. I'm going to shut that off now, and we'll reverse it. Back this off so I can get a little different angle here. I want you to see it come up to that shoulder of that hex stock. And uh, I'm holding it now, and of course it's cutting a thread. I release it, and it turns with the workpiece. As soon as it comes up against that shoulder, I won't be able to hold it anymore. It'll take it right out of my hand. Of course, there it, I, I was not holding it tightly, so it took it out pretty easily. Now I s stop it, reverse it, and we'll back that die off again. As soon as I grip it, it starts to back off. And I can even turn, I can rotate it a little bit to the left myself and not speeding it up much, but a little bit. You can see how you just release it or hold it, whichever you want to do. It'll back that all the way off. And uh, you'll see a very nice, nice thread. These small sizes are so much fun to work with with a hand holding. All right, here I've got a 9 16th diameter piece of aluminum that we're going to tap with an 832 tap. 832 tap is held in the quarter inch tap holder. Slips into the knurled sleeve. Tighten up the set screw against the flat. Snug up that chuck. Slip the number two Morse taper arbor into the tailstock quill. Slip the uh, neural sleeve over that. And we're about ready to start tapping. Oh, that's a number 29 drill. Tap drill size for a uh, 832 tap. It's about 136 thousandths diameter. Running in back gear, it's about 95 RPM. We've got a little chamfer on that hole to help the tap get a good start. Uh, I'm just going to push that tap. Just going to push that tap in there, and it will. You'll see it start to, the rotating piece will start to pull the tap in. There we go. Give it a little push. Now you can see it pulling. Now I can, I'm hand holding that, of course, and uh, it's 
make cutting a thread. When I release it, it turns with the workpiece. Again, this hand holding is so nice on these small parts. I release it and it turns. What I'm going to do here is reverse it and back it out. So you can see that, uh, see some chips on there. Get it out here far enough. Maybe we can see these chips. There, we got a few chips on there. Not much. <laughs> All right, now I slap a little more oil on there and you can just bring it up and you can restart it again. It'll pull itself right in. Oh, get it going the right direction. That always helps. Pulling the tap in. See how easy it is to hold that. And uh, that isn't drilled too deep, so I can run that tap up against the bottom of the hole. There. It, when it gets the bottom, it'll. I won't be able to hold it anymore. It's not there yet. It's cutting the thread now. It's got a little ways to go. There. Now it's coming up against the bottom. It takes a sort of takes it out of my hand. I release it. Release my hand, the grip, Re reverse the machine, and we'll back this out. So I can see how I can s increase the back out speed a little bit myself. Turn it. No big deal, but sometimes you get in a hurry. Okay, we're finished with that. All right, here I've got a piece of 5 16 diameter cold rolled steel in the, my three jaw chuck turned down to about 306. And we're going to uh, cut a 5 16 18 thread with, a, with the one inch diameter die. Uh, put the die holder in the knurled sleeve, tighten up the set screw. Here's the 5 16 18 die. It's a round split, one inch die. Insert it into the die holder. Uh, snug up the two set screws that hold the die. They don't have to be overly tight, just snug. Uh, slip the number two Morse tapered arbor into the tailstock quill. Slip the knurled sleeve over the 5 8 diameter arbor. And again, uh, in this case, because it's lar as large as it is, we can't hand hold it, so I've got to use the stop handle, which threads into the opposite hole in the knurled sleeve. Uh, it's got a hole in that stop handle. I use a 1 8 inch diameter punch to snug that up against the shoulder. You want it tight against that shoulder. Gives it a little additional strength. Uh, slip that over the uh, shank. See how the stop handle rests against the carriage? And when it, when we reverse it, that stop handle will reverse just like that and hit on the other side of the carriage. So it's pretty easy to use. Works fine. And as I say, you can hand hold these larger materials and steel and things like that. This piece has a little chamfer on it also. Slap a little more of that mobile cutting oil on there. And we'll push that uh, die up there. Pick up that chamfer and uh, start threading. Stop handles resting against the carriage. Sometimes you got to adjust the carriage a little bit. Uh, push that up there, and you can see it starting to thread. It's pulling that die in towards the chuck. You can see the chips a little bit there. Stop it and reverse it. See how that flops over there to the other side when I reverse it? Now it's backing that die off. I want I did that so I want you to see what's happening here. See we cut another thread. Now I'm gonna what we'll do, I'm gonna run it on a little farther here. Reverse, get it running in the right direction, slop a little more oil on there. It's very much like hand holding, but you just you 
can't quite do it. There it picks up again. Sometimes adjust the carriage a little bit. I'm going to run that die right up near the chuck and uh, stop the machine, reverse it. It'll flop over and it'll back that die right off. Uh, works almost as easy as hand holding. Once you get used to it, it's very easy and you can prevent any problems by breaking dies. Now we're going to run a tap into a piece of uh, 11 16 hex cold rolled steel that I've got in the three jaw chuck. I've got it drilled with a 5 16 tap drill. That's a tap drill for a 3 8 16 tap. Uh, put the 3 8 16 tap into the large, the half inch tap holder, snug up that chuck. Put the number two Morse taper tang into the tailstock quill. Slide that knurled sleeve onto the 5 8 shank of the uh, arbor. Thread in the stop handle. Again, this is too big to hand hold. Put the stop handle in there, tighten it up with a, in this case, I use a 1 8 inch punch. Snug it up good, slide it onto the uh, arbor, adjust the carriage so that that stop handle rests against the carriage. We've got a little chamfer on that 5 16 drilled hole in there. And uh, again, the stop handle up against the carriage. When we reverse it, it'll, to back it out, it'll flip over on the other side. Uh, Machine again, still running in back gear, 95 RPM, slap a little mobile cutting oil on there. Can't get too much oil on there. Chamfer on that hole, of course, to help that tap get a start. Push that up in there. The stop handle's resting against the carriage. Push it into the hole and it'll start drawn in the tap as it cuts the thread. I'm just going to go in a ways and we'll stop and reverse it here. Back out and run it in again. Stop the spindle, reverse it, see how it flops over, backs right out. A lot of materials you can run it in as deep as you want, but it doesn't hurt to take a couple different cuts sometimes depending on your material. You get experience with that. I'm going to reverse the machine now. Slap a little more oil on there. And we'll run that tap in uh, a little farther. Don't remember exactly how deep I drilled that, but anyway. Picks up the thread, pulls the tap in. Almost as nice as hand holding, but uh, gets the job done. That's the important thing. Rapidly, accurately, gets the job done. Stop it, reverse it. The handle flops over to the other side. It backs the tap out. We're finished. To see where to purchase this tool I'm running the title page again here Neil's niche that's my website all the information is available there to purchase this tool or you can call me or my email address is here also hope you enjoyed this